Hi, welcome to DoctorSecrets.com. I'm DR, and today we're going to talk about sleep apnea. Now, the first thing you need to know is that there's actually two different types of sleep apnea. There's a central type, which is more of a, a neurological problem where there's a lack of respiratory drive while someone is sleeping. And then the second type is obstructive sleep apnea, or OSA, and that's the one that's far more common, and that's the one I'm covering in this little uh, video blurb. So, I'll do it through an illustration with my pal here, uh, Jack Spratt, and this is his wife who could eat no fat. And he comes in and complains that he's um, sleeping an ordinary number of hours, about seven to eight a night, but when he gets up in the morning, he's still exhausted. He's dragging himself. It's hard to get through his work day. And no matter how much he sleeps, he still feels tired all the time. He also complains that he's getting a lot of uh, morning headaches and visceral obesity, uh, uh, obesity around his stomach, basically a fat gut. Um, and then his wife leans over and mentions that he snores like an elephant at night, shakes the whole bed, the whole room. She often has to go out and sleep on the couch. But sometimes when she does sleep next to him, she'll notice that if she wakes up, uh, sometimes he pauses breathing as, as the night goes on and she'll have to ram him in the ribs to get him going again. So these, these are very typical features for um, obstructive sleep apnea and the symptoms we can explain uh, pretty easily as well. The first thing you have to understand about sleep apnea is that there's a disconnect between getting air from the outside through the oropharynx into the individual's lungs where it's needed for proper metabolism. So as a consequence, you produce a lot of a stress hormone called cortisol. And that cortisol um, is partly what's responsible for fluid retention and the, the fat, the visceral obesity that's hard to get rid of. And because of the fluid retention, it also tends to um, promote hypertension in these individuals. The headaches that he's getting is because his, his brain is getting suffocated during the night. So when he wakes up in the morning, he has something called hypercarbia, which means that he's retained too much carbon dioxide, which causes the flushing headaches. The fatigue, obviously, is because he's suffocated through the night. So he's had poor sleep. So in terms of diagnosing the sleep apnea, it's usually pretty obvious when someone walks through my door. I'm usually pretty suspicious that they have sleep apnea even before they tell me the story. Because one of the things you tend to notice is that they tend to have short, thick necks. But not always, but most of the time, the neck is very short and thick. And they usually tend to be um, big, heavy people. Again, not always. But the reason for that is um, when the individual lies back, either their, their tongue, if it's a, a nice, big, beefy tongue, may, may flop backwards in their oropharynx, blocking the, the air passage into the lungs, or the fatty tissues around the, the neck may sag while they're sleeping, again, restricting the, the flow of air into their lungs. So that's basically what's happening with sleep apnea. To diagnose it, uh, typically what we do is send you for something called a Stardust uh, study. Stardust. And what that entails is basically to hook you up on some equipment overnight, uh, monitor your oxygen saturation to see how your oxygen uh, fluctuates up and down during the night and also to check what your chest excursion is like to see if you're actually pausing breathing um, as you make it through. And sometimes they may add in some additional flavorings like they may check also your uh, pulse rate, blood pressure, etc. <clears throat> so what they're looking for at the end is a statistical representation of your sleep during that uh, eight hour span. How many pauses did you have, how long and how severe, how low did the oxygen saturation drop while you were sleeping. If you're uh, moderate to severe uh, by their cutoffs, then the treatment can be twofold. One is we can use something called a CPAP machine. And what that basically means is positive pressure. So in other words, if there's something blocking your airway while you sleep, either the, the, the soft tissues of your neck or your tongue falling back, I use a machine applied over your face while you're sleeping and push or ram oxygen past the obstruction into your lungs. So even if you stop breathing, this artificial device will keep breathing for you and pushing air in. So you wake up feeling far more refreshed because you weren't um, desaturated during the night and suffocating or drowning during the night. So that's one option. Another option is to send you to see an air nose and throat specialist and get you set up for something called a uvuloplasty. 
won't bother spelling the whole thing out. And basically what that means is trimming back some of the palette so that there's less, uh, less hindrance or obstruction in the way to, so that you can glide air easily th through your mouth and, or, or through your nose and down through your, um, your trachea into your, into your uh, lungs. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is uh, sleep apnea in a nutshell. So if you're noticing uh, symptoms of that, especially if your partner or friends tell you that you snore like an elephant, uh, you probably should come in and see your family doctor and get uh, tested uh, Stardust Tests. It really could be a life changer for you. Uh, imagine a world where you felt totally exhausted all the time and transfer that into a world where you felt peppy and energetic and able to achieve stuff during the day. That's the consequence of, of not treating obstructive sleep apnea. So that's it in a nutshell, folks. Uh, thank you for watching and stay well.